I made a mistake, but I have a solution and I'm going to show you how to fix it if you make the same mistake that I did today. Alright, I realized that I made a mistake and whenever you make mistakes, there's a lesson to be learned. So I'm going to share with you the lesson that I learned in the mistake that I made today in our Lightroom episode. But before we do that, I just want to give you guys a heads up that we're going to be doing something new, something awesome. What we're going to be doing is featuring one of your photos every week. In fact, every Wednesday, we're going to have a photo of the week on our YouTube videos. To participate, all you have to do is follow us on Instagram at PhotoNerdsUnite and hashtag your pictures with PNFL, which stands for Photo Nerds for Life. Hashtag your pictures. We're going to go through and take a look at them and we're going to feature one of our favorites every week here on the channel. Back to the mistake that I made recently and this might be something that you've done or might be doing and you don't even realize that you're doing it. And what it is is uh, taking pictures on JPEG. Now, if your camera is set to JPEG, then you're going to be dealing with this issue. For me, I shoot all of my pictures on RAW. But for whatever reason, I was having a bonehead moment this day and I happened to change my file size to a JPEG file instead of a RAW file. The only thing that I could think of is I might have been jumping in between video and stills and made a mistake. Now, this isn't the end of the world, but one of the things that I love to do when I come into Lightroom is make white balance adjustments. And whenever your, your file is a JPEG file, you're going to run into some problems. And I want to just show you exactly what I mean by that. Here I have an image that I took and you'll notice up here that it's definitely a .jpeg file. So if I go underneath the basics panel where you have uh, white balance presets typically, you'll notice that I only have three options. I have as shot, auto and custom. And the reason for this is because when you're shooting in JPEG, you're only going to get these profile options. So I'm kind of limited here. If I were shooting in raw as I was in this particular image and I were to head underneath those same presets, you'll notice that I have a lot more daylight, cloudy, shade, etc. So the moral of this story is if I want to access these presets that are built in, that are being pulled from my camera, I have to shoot in RAW. If you're shooting in JPEG, you're not going to get these. But there is a workaround for this and I want to show you what that workaround is. What I did was I took these presets or the, the ones that are built in, for example, I would click on say daylight and then I would save this as a preset. I could go over to the left hand side here, click on the plus button, add a daylight white balance. And I'm not going to check any of the boxes except for the white balance options that I have here underneath the basic section. And then it'll ask me where I want to put it. I'm just going to hit create. So if I were to go back to that daylight picture, even though I don't have the presets here, and even though this is a JPEG file, I have a preset now that will give me a daylight white balance. And if I click on it, it will apply that white balance tone to this image. Let me go back to the other one and do this again with something a little bit more obvious. Let's say that we were going to do this with tungsten. I can go up to my presets, hit the plus button, type in tungsten, white balance, save it, and there you have it. Now if I go back to the JPEG and click on tungsten white balance, you'll see that it's going to apply that preset. So what I've done knowing this was I created a little cheat sheet, so to speak. I created an entire section just for white balance presets. And so now I have auto, daylight, cloudy, shade, all of those. So it doesn't matter if I'm working with a JPEG file or not. I can click on daylight or cloudy or skim through any of these and see if they work. I've also built myself a reset button so that I could reset my white balance back to the way that I downloaded it. That way I could kind of play from scratch here or if I decided I didn't like 
any of these presets. I could reset it back to the beginning and try and figure out another way to fix the white balance. But the moral of the story here is it's very important for you to know that whether you're shooting on RAW or whether you're shooting on JPEG, and it's also important for you to know that if you are shooting on JPEG, one of the advantages of shooting on RAW is that you're gonna have these presets when you show up in Lightroom. There's many advantages to shooting on RAW aside from this one, but this is just a, yet another reason as to why you should be shooting on RAW. And if you're not, and you are shooting in JPEG, you should get your hands on some presets like this to kind of help you through the process because if you don't, you won't have these presets uh, like, like I did. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully that kind of helps you guys a little bit. Hopefully you don't make the same mistake that I made. And hopefully you'll participate in our photo of the week, which we are really, really excited to start doing next Wednesday. So until then, have a great day, everybody.